and welcome back to Finding Wendy. Well, thanks for joining me again this week. Uh, so this week I'm going to talk about my stats and talk about my one year follow up with my nutritionist and some other things. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. back. So first of my stats, what I was going to talk about. Uh, so uh, for many of you that have never been here, um, I'm a lot of you already know. So anyway, I'll just repeat as I repeat every week what my stats are. And uh, so I started this whole journey in December 2017. I weighed 450 pounds. Here's the picture. And um, my started my liquid diet, my OptiFast, on the um, February 20th, uh, 2018, and I weighed 400 pounds. I had my bariatric surgery with Dr. Timothy Jackson at Toronto Western Hospital at uh, 375 pounds on March 20th, 2018. Uh, last week I was 237 and this week I'm 235. So I've lost two pounds this week. So I have now lost a total of, drum roll please, 215 pounds. So it's great to see that there actually is some progress. I put together a sort of an overview of the last 15 months and here are the images. And as you can see, in the first 11 months, um, as we call it the bariatric honeymoon, uh, there, there was the most significant weight loss. And then in these last three to four months, it has really slowed down to a crawl. So for all of you that are considering bariatric surgery or have had bariatric surgery, just know that your first 10 to 12 months are basically going to be your biggest weight loss. And then after that, you're confronted with what I'm confronted with is the old stalls. Um, actually, I had four or five stalls during the whole weight loss process, but I just stayed the course. And uh, even though I'm still about, uh, I'd say 50 pounds from my goal, now I'm suspecting it will take another year to lose that 50 pounds. So uh, I'm prepared for that and I'm sticking to sticking on track. And, uh, you know, this week I went to the gym and I had a huge NSV and that was that I was able to walk on the treadmill. So here's a big a picture of me on the treadmill and the, uh, the fact is, is that I was able to walk on the treadmill for 15 minutes and I tried walking on the treadmill about, I'd say about three or four months ago. And I just couldn't do it because it was just too painful on my hip and my curvature of my back was still so far over that it, I just felt like I was falling. I was going to fall at any minute because of the uh, treadmill speed. Even if I had it at the slowest speed, it just, it just was too difficult to do. So uh, when I was at the gym this week, I was doing my regular exercises. And then at the end of my um, weight training exercises, I always do cardio. And so I thought, you know what, this time I'm gonna try the treadmill and see if it's any better. And indeed I was able to stay on the treadmill for 15 minutes. So I'm gonna try and up it again this week and see if I can get uh, it up to as much as 30 minutes on the treadmill because I want to be able to walk and be able to walk better and longer because of my trip to Amsterdam this summer in July that I need to you know, keep on, uh, keep on moving and keeping, be able to walk. So anyway, that's good news. So, uh, 215 pounds, uh, two pounds off this week. So staying the course and staying on track. That's for sure. Thing I wanted to talk about was this week I had my one year follow up, even though I had my surgery 15 months ago, uh, I had my one year follow up with our dietitian at, um, at Toronto Western hospital. And that was with, um, Lorraine, Lorraine Gugan, Gogian, I can't really pronounce her last name very well, but here's her name here, right there, I put it there. Uh, Lorraine, so she's the registered dietitian as a part of the Toronto Bariatric Program, and there's links below this video to the, uh, the Toronto Western Hospital Bariatric Clinic, and you can see all the names and everything of all of the practitioners that are part of the program. So about uh, four weeks ago, I did my one year follow up of my blood work. I had my blood work done. We are given um, uh, these sheets that we have to go to the blood clinic and we have to have all our blood uh, checked for all the vitamins. So I was really interested whether or not I had any kind of vitamin deficiencies. 
uh, because I'm very di diligent about taking my vitamins every day, twice a day, in the morning and at night. And remember, I talked in a, pre in a previous video about habit anchors. So a habit anchor is um, associating one habit with another habit or creating a new habit with an already established older habit. And so uh, the habit anchor that I have uh, in the morning is that I, after I take a shower, I dry myself off um, while I'm sitting on my uh, shower chair and I take my vitamins. So the um, habit is taking a shower, drying myself off and the new uh, habits that's connected to that as the habit anchor is taking my vitamins. So I take my vitamins in the morning and at night the habit anchor is brushing my teeth. After I brush my teeth, I take my vitamins. So it's just the association of those two actions that's considered the habit anchor. So I was very interested to know that um, I'm actually taking the wrong calcium. So I do have a calcium deficiency and so I have to change that immediately. And uh, I, I was just taking regular calcium with calcium with uh, vitamin D, but as it turns out, I have to take, um, oh, I have to take calcium citrate. So I posted a picture here of the, um, of the calcium citrate products that Lorraine suggested I order. I'm just looking it up here on my computer, sorry, uh, so that I have the, the name of it correct, yeah. So um, the JAMP Calci O3 is the calcium citrate 500 milligrams. So that I have to take uh, in place of the calcium that I was taking because I took, I was taking calcium gummies and cause I can't stand the calcium tablets because they're freaking horse pills. They're just too big. And um, so these calcium gummies uh, were delicious, first of all. So it was like my night treat before I go to bed. Cause as you know, you're never supposed to take your calcium together with your other vitamins. So I take all my other vitamins in the morning and I take my calcium at night with glucosamine for my arthritis. So she suggested I take the Jamp Cal, uh, Calci, which has this, the calcium citrate and it's a chewable, which is great. Um, because uh, I, I just don't like swallowing these giant calcium horse pills. So uh, I was and I was able to order it actually at my pharmacy uh, because my local Loblaws, because I live right across the street from Maple Leaf Gardens Loblaws store, they don't they don't have them on the shelves. But as it turns out, if they if they don't have your product, you can actually go to a pharmacist and ask them to order it for you. So I didn't know that. So uh, I ordered that calcium and I'll be picking it up. Uh, today or tomorrow because uh, it came in so uh, then also we did my blood pressure so there you can see the results of my blood pressure the uh, nurse practitioner came in and took my blood pressure and it's perfect perfect blood pressure so I'm really happy about that because I was worried about my blood pressure because uh, about a month no it's almost six weeks ago my thrombosis doctor took me off blood thinners I was on warfarin for five years because five years ago I had a pulmonary embolism and a blood clot in my leg that rake went up my leg into my lungs and I had a pulmonary embolism. It was very serious, I was very sick. And uh, so since then I was on these blood thinners, but uh, after I met with my thrombosis doctor about six weeks ago, he said, because you're so active, you're going to the gym, you've lost so much more weight, you're no longer living a sedentary life, there's no need to keep you on a blood thinner. And blood thinners help with keeping your blood pressure down, of course. So I was really intrigued to see what my blood pressure is now. And, and also that's a huge NSV because normally the blood pressure cup is on my forearm because my, my arms were so big, it was so painful. But now the nurse just put it on my upper arm and it didn't hurt. Like I normally, I, it was so excruciatingly painful to have the uh, blood pressure cup on my upper arm that I, it would just shoot my, my blood pressure up anyway. Um, so now she put it on my upper arm and it was fine and my blood pressure was good. And uh, so I was really, really happy about that. So, you know, I had this conversation this week about age. You know, I'm turning 60 this year and my dad died at 74, which is 14 years from my age today uh, now and it's scary so with this weight loss and with my healthier act my healthier lifestyle my active lifestyle the way that i'm eating now 
I'm, I'm hoping I added 10 years to my life, at least 10 years to my life, because I don't want to die in 16 years. No way, or 14 years, like my dad died. He died at 74. My mom died at 79, and she was obese. My mom was obese. She died of uh, basically a liver. Her liver just stopped working because she had fatty liver disease. And that's a, that's a huge wake-up call for, you know, being obese, being overweight is unhealthy. And, you know, it's, uh, it's really, um, it's, a, it's a difficult topic in our family anyway, because we're all foodies. We all love food and we've had to deal with weight issues all our life. And um, so now, you know, it's uh, wake up and smell the roses. I, I, I don't have much longer to live in this lifetime. I'll not be on this earth much longer. So might as well make the best of it is the way I see it. <laughs> So, um, so anyways, that's about it for this week. I had, uh, orchestra rehearsal here. I am on my, on my, in, on my, playing on my horn. I'm, I'm still in rehearsal mode with the Mississauga Symphony Orchestra, having a great time, uh, with, uh, with do, with playing on my horn again, which is great fun. And, um, I'm just waiting for nicer weather here in Toronto. We have had the rainiest spring on record, I think, and, I haven't been back on my bike because the weather has been rainy and cold like today Mother's Day happy Mother's Day by the way to everybody out there who's a mom I'm a fur mom you know I have my fur baby Lucy who's asleep here beside me and um, and so you know right now it's eight degrees in Toronto and it's cold and it's gray and it's not sunny and it's just horrible and so we're just it's like we have perpetual winter it just will not get warm and we have sometimes one day or maybe two days and that was last week it was a really nice sunday and monday last week and it was like we were all on vacation all of a sudden for 48 hours and now we're back to reality with this cold weather <sighs> but it will come soon i hope it will come soon so anyways, that's it for this week. Thanks for very much for fi for following Finding Wendy. And, um, you know, uh, oh, I was also going to mention for you out there that are in, in, on Instagram. Yeah, I, you know, I'm on Instagram and I post a lot of pictures to Instagram every day. Uh, I post at least once or twice a day. So uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I do a lot of other things as well uh, music related cultural related toronto related but also diet related uh, not diet journey wendy's journey when finding wendy's journey diet is a bad word it's a four letter word it's not about diet it's about changing your lifestyle so thanks for watching me this week and we will see you again next week bye <laughs>